Well, it's been about a month since the last time I introduced you to Barclays Homegrown Geothermal Greenhouse. And as you can see, our cover crop is coming up. I put oats and then the other cover crop mix we did was some radishes, turnips, uh, collard greens, brassicas, some millets and some sedan grass. I was a little concerned about the warm season grasses, the millet and the sedan grass coming up. But I do see right here is some either sedan grass or millet, which is a warm season grass. So the ground temperature got over 65 degrees. Um, it's a fun day today. It was cold, six below last night. It's still about three, I believe. Yeah, 3.6 degrees, 85 degrees in here, and 50% humidity. The cooling fans were running, but I shut them off to do the video. Um, up at this level is 84.9, and just three foot below it, I guess if you can see, we're at 60 degrees. So there's a lot of microclimates within the greenhouse. Um, you can see up against the south wall, the brassicas, the broad leaves are coming pretty good, but the oats aren't. And uh, we have some dirt piled up on the outside edge, plus the snow was there, so it sort of shaded that. You can see the shade. And then the uh, condensation that collects from the humidity runs down the Lexan plastic and is there. So that's quite a bit wetter. So that'll be interesting to see. I think we're going to try some lettuce. Um, they like cool, wet. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see just the microclimates within, within the greenhouse, how we're going to do. So on the south grow bed, we put the brassicas uh, cover crop mix with the oats and we're probably going to do a little mixture of both. We're going to smother some of it and uh, we're also going to try and take like a propane torch and just uh, try and overheat it to kill it. Some of the stuff we're going to direct seed. We really can't put the black plastic over to smother it. And then we're probably just going to leave some strips also and take it all the way through. Molly has each one of these six foot sections as a separate unit that we're going to plant the polyculture of stuff in. And uh, so we might just leave a strip. Each one of these yellow lines, I guess, signifies where it is on the, on the rail. But we might just leave a strip of the cover crop. To, do, to work as a divider that way too. Um, we filled our, Molly put some pictures on Facebook, but we filled our fish tanks up with snow melt water. Um, we, have, we have water issues. That's Eastern Montana, I guess, but uh, high in total dissolved solids. So last fall, we put rain gutters up on all of our outbuildings that we're going to catch rainwater. Um, but yeah, the, it, it melted the other day. We had some snow. And so Hattie and I collected about 950 gallons. We have four of these 35 gallon trash containers in here too. And it gets awfully hot, <laughs> three degrees and it's already 85. And, uh, It'll be well over a hundred in here today if we don't have the cooling fans running. And uh, so the other day when it was hot, I filled these up with snow and used it sort of as a cooler too. That was sort of fun. So I told you the other time that we were waiting for our soil samples and we did get those back. And I was very surprised with the pH in our soil. Uh, they called it an 8.7 which is pretty sodic. So what we did 
is we use some amu amu aluminum sulfate and some organic acid acidizer. And before we seeded our cover crop, we actually incorporated that in to the ground. Um, trying to get it to seven or below. We're going to, after the oats or after the cover crop goes another, about a week, I'm going to take another sample and send it off to the state. I bought a, just a, a do-it-yourself probe, and we've probed, and it's anywhere from, well, it likes to settle on seven, so I'm a little bit concerned if, if it's really that accurate. So I guess we're going to send another sample off to the lab, Midwest Labs, and uh, get another result. But, so that was an ex that was a sort of a surprise. Most of my farm fields run between seven and seven four. So to be eight seven, and I know we brought in some manure when we were putting the when we brought the soil in, um, but I didn't think that would affect it that much. So that was a surprise. We do have some we have a little polyculture going here. We got radishes on the front, peas in the middle. And then carrots in the back. Put a little trellis up out of an old hog panel. And uh, so that's sort of fun. We're going to have some radishes pretty quick. And then a week later, I planted more radishes and peas and carrots. We have onions uh, planted underneath the, where our backup heaters are. Um, then we have some more peas and parsnips I believe in this one and then peas in that one and then I uh, Molly allowed me a couple one section on the north and one section on the south and then I got to plant all these little places down here too but I planted onions little green bunch of onions and they're just starting to come up had some oats that I didn't get sort of Oh, cleaned out of our little strip but uh, I'm just gonna leave what I didn't get cleaned out just to see how that little polyculture works um, and then Molly and the girls have started some other stuff put it had to put it on a heat pad um, it stays plenty warm in here during the day but at night, it gets cold. So we do have to do a little, a little bit of extra stuff that way. Um, we're gonna, it's our little regenerative agriculture experiment. We try to practice regenerative ag on our farmland and on our grazing land. And uh, you know, we're not, we're not organic, we are regenerative. Uh, and and we're stri we'll strive to be maybe organic in here, but one thing nice about regenerative, like with our pH and having to deal with that, we can use use some non-organic means of of getting to where we need to be. And then when we're when then when we're there, then we can you know we can eliminate some of that. So. Uh, I guess we, I haven't watered the cover crop for four or five days. I want to go, you know, another week, a full week without watering it. Try to get the roots to go down. I mean, that's, that's part of regenerative is building that, that soil system. And uh, to help with the water infiltration and the, the carbon cycle, the store of carbon. That's, that's where it's at is is uh taking the carbon in the the ph or the organic matter in our beds ranges from nine to twelve and a half so that's really nice you know most of our farm fields are we started them they were below one percent um now most of them are over two which we gain that one percent fairly fast but it's a slower process going going over two in the farm fields. Uh, I have one farm 
north of Baker that is around four, which is really good. So, well, I guess until next time, thanks for, thanks for watching and hopefully I progress <laughs> at getting better with the, with the video and, and uh, I'm going to turn these fans back on so, so we can start cooling it down. Well, until next time, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.